okay, everybody? It is about 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, and uh, I think this is take number three so far tonight. Uh, I keep going off on tangents. Uh, let me just get to the point rather quickly here. There is a, tr a triangle pattern which is starting to form here on the hourly. Um, I think we've got to be careful here going short. There is some heavy-duty support here at 260 uh, and then again at 200, of course, for the psychological area. But uh, more importantly, I think we're going to have some trouble fighting this overall trend. Uh, as you can see, the overall trend on the midterm is up for the British pound. Uh, so we've got to be careful about trying to short too deeply into that. The reason why I'm talking about the mid midterm trend now, as you can see, the market made a low here in August uh, down in 9700 area made uh, a higher low here at, at the 9800 area and is now in the process of making yet a, a higher low. Uh, you can also see that the overall trend on the volume, uh, let me go ahead and start right about here, is up barely uh, since the middle of September, but is down when looking into August. So put all this together, what do you come up with? A mixed picture, okay? It's even if you don't get an overall direction, that's important information too. So when we see all these mixed signals, this is when we can start to say to ourselves, okay, there's no real direction in the market. No one is taking control. There's no one opinion that is really coming out as being the dominant opinion. We've got to be ready for whipsaws. We've got to be ready for choppy action. That's the whole reason why I illustrated all of that stuff. Now, if you found it all confusing, basically what I'm saying is when you're, when you're looking at the chart, and you see all of these conflicting things, that's when you've got to step back and realize that the market's not giving you a clear direction. Uh, I've, I've used this example before. This is something that uh, some older sales trainers would use. This was called the Ben Franklin close. And on one side, you'd put yes. On the other side, you'd put no. And then you'd list all the reasons for, all the reasons against. And whichever side wound up having more on it, was the side, obviously, that made more sense. Uh, it's a very logical, very rational way to go about making decisions uh, when it comes to buying something, though it's not always the, the best uh, alternative. However, in these types of decisions, it can be very useful. Uh, so what you can do is, is take all the reasons why you feel there, there should be a trade for, uh, actually, a better way to do it would be uh, to have one side for long, one side for short, and then start listing off all the reasons, all the reasons you think the market is long, you should go long, all the reasons why you think you should go short. And if one side uh, winds up being longer, if there are more reasons to go long, then you simply wait for a long trade setup. If there are more reasons to go short, short trade setup. So having said all that, uh, looks like a, a fairly decent entry on the on the short side. Again, this is not an autopilot trade. Um, yeah, hopefully with the latest Q&A, um, and if you, I apologize for, for delaying so long with that. I will do my dead level best to not delay the, the Q&A that long again. Um, uh, in the Q&A video, though, I talk about the reasons why uh, I've, I've been reluctant to look at trades as autopilot trades. And it, it boils down to there hasn't been a clear trend.